You are listening to the Patriot Pastors Podcast, where we talk about today's issues from a pastor's perspective, as well as calling America back to the faith of our fathers. Without God, democracy will not and cannot long endure. We ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Here's your host, Wade Lentz and Harold Smith. All right, welcome to the Patriot Pastors Podcast. I'm Wade Lentz, pastor of Barrel Baptist Church in Bologna, Arkansas, and I'm joined with my co-host, longtime friend, and uh, I tell you, Harold, this is like we need to re- reacquaint ourselves again. It's been a while since we've done a podcast together. I think the last one, we, we recorded a couple at the conference at Lee Creek back at the 1st of July. And here we are, the 1st of September. It's been two months, Wade. Yes, it's been a while. There's been vacations between the both of us, uh, church activities and so forth. But really the biggest thing for me was... Uh, back in i think it was the middle of august we moved our oldest son to mississippi state university and uh, this was our first our oldest child that left the nest he flew the coop and uh wow that put me like in a two-week depression period so that was harder than what i imagined I was glad to see him go i'm like hey one down one to go babe we're almost home free (laughs) Yeah, for those listeners who don't know, I still have three, uh, three more to go, and my youngest just turned seven year- yesterday. So, I I have a while yet. Don't start marking your calendar. I still have a twenty-one year old that lives at home. So, okay, <laughs> just because they go off to college, don't mean they're not gonna hang around the house. Right. So, but now it's it's been a while since we've got together, and uh, we have had a busy summer. I'm freshly unemployed. For the last 11 months, if nobody knows, I've been the interim pastor at West Park Baptist Church in Ozark. And uh, last night was my last service. We had a potluck dinner and got to tell everybody goodbye. It was a really nice time. I love those people. And uh, I'm really happy. Brother Russell Threat uh, will be the new pastor there starting Sunday. And I know Brother Russell. You know Russell. Russell. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Good guy. Couldn't be happier for who the pastor is there to lead them on in the future. Well, that's great. And so you were there in 11 months. Um, pretty difficult, I, I believe you would agree, to find a good candidate as to be the pastor. You, you know, now that we have a pastor at West Park, we can talk about it. Um, yeah. And I don't want to talk about West Park. I mean, church business, church business. It, it was right. a good time for me. The people loved me. I love the people. They love Russell. It, it was a good thing. But finding a pastor was a lot harder than I ever thought it would be, Wade. I, mm-hmm. This is a sizable church. You know, they run over 100 people. Um, they have nice facilities. They're in a good location. They're in a good town. I thought, man, they'll be lined up to to take over this church. And man, was I ever shocked when we started advertising. Because when I came, I didn't instantly say, you know, we're looking for a preacher. We had to get some ducks in a row. We had to get some things fixed. Yeah, That's why I went there to do some heavy lifting, to kind of be a sacrificial uh, pastor, to be the bad guy and do the Mm -hmm. things nobody else wanted to do. So when the pastor came in, he could have a real good ministry. Right. So it wasn't until April that we actually said, okay, we're ready to look for a pastor. And so I just planned on being gone at the end of May. And because I thought, you know, we'll advertise for a month. We'll receive resumes for a month. We'll hire one of these guys. They'll be here at the end of May. Yeah. (laughs) And it was not that way. And I had. I had, I know I've told you, do you know anybody that might be interested? Every preacher I've known sure. for months, I've been saying, Hey, if you know anybody, if you're thinking about leaving, 
This would be a good church. I've tried to do that over and over and over. When we ran an ad, and this is a, a Baptist Missionary Association church in the BMA, we ran an ad in the BMA paper. We advertised in several states. Um, basically, we ended up with about four resumes out of that advertisement, none of hmm. which would have been qualified best I could tell to be a pastor here. Right. They just didn't meet, a lot of them didn't meet the basic qualifications of a pastor. Wow. And so we just, we advertised more. I called more people. I spread the word any way and every way I possibly could. And we got some guys that were, you know, okay candidates, but they all had some deficiency. They didn't have any experience or they were, they had a lot of experience, but they were so experienced. They were close to, to, to death or the nursing home. I mean, they were mm -hmm. really old. Right. And we just consistently just was like, they were either inexperienced or very old. And when you're trying to, to, to build a church and lead a church into the future, you need somebody with some experience, but enough youth left to sure to do the heavy lifting. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just didn't, didn't you get some kind of bizarre, uh, pastoral uh resume like yeah. an apostle or something like that yeah we got a guy who referred to himself as a bishop he had a big a big black and white robe <laughs> with crosses all over it uh had a dollar sign in front of his name ah uh, had a little catchy phrase i'm trying to remember what it said don't don't look just book um and he was available for everything you know pop okay of uh, conferences, church camps, revival meetings, pulpit supply. I mean, he just looked like he really needed some work. Sure. sure. But he wouldn't have fit there. A lot of the churches he had pastored were Holy Ghost Tabernacle Centers. You know, it wasn't it wasn't yeah. Baptist churches. His doctrine clearly didn't didn't line up with ours. Sure, sure. But yeah, there is a I guess you could say a shortage of of God called qualified men. Uh, available for the for the pulpit and, and uh, what happens a lot in churches is they they just get uh for i guess a lack of a better word they get tired of searching then they uh just call anybody to come and uh, that's obviously not the best route to take right it, and i want to be clear here we were not overly picky you know we didn't require someone to have a degree from a seminary we mm -hmm. didn't require them to have 10 years experience. You know, we just wanted someone who met the qualifications of first Timothy chapter three and Titus chapter one. And then we started, if they met those qualifications, then we started looking at their doctrine and their experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we interviewed a total of three out of all the resumes and names I was given. We interviewed the first one, very good guy, doctrinally sound had a lot going for him, just zero pastoral experience. None, not a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never been a pastor before and a church this size. We, we just felt like the committee felt like, you know, he just, he's never been here. He needs to start somewhere a little smaller, get his feet under him, make a few mistakes and then come to a church like this. Mm -hmm. The next guy we interviewed had tons of experience but he was older. He was pretty set in his ways. He said, look, this is what I'm going to do. This is the way it's going to be. If you don't want to do this, don't call me. Yeah. And when he left, the men were like, you know, he's a phenomenal preacher and he's got a lot of knowledge, but that's not the way we want to do it. And mm -hmm. so we were back to square one and I mean, wait, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you were put pretty deflated at that yeah, point. April went by with nearly no resumes. May went by with a, a, a bad, uh, interview that just, I mean, it wasn't a bad interview. It just wasn't the right guy. Sure. June went by with an interview that just wasn't the right guy. July went by and I'm like, man, I, I just, I, I know the guy exists. And they were like, well, maybe we should look at this other candidate. This guy was nearly 80 years old. Wow. And I said, man, I just think if you hire an 80 year old man, odds are in a couple of years, his mind is slipping, his health is failing. I mean, when you're 80 years old, how much do you have left in the tank? Sure. Unless you're Abraham or something like that. You know? I, I wonder that. And I'm just 45. So <laughs> I couldn't I imagine being 80. 
I, I prepared yeah. Leap Creek to take over after I died, and I was only 45 years old because I thought I ain't got much time left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, really, what happens is, and you know, helping Lee Creek find a pastor after I left there 14 years in the same pulpit. When I resigned at Lee Creek, I thought, man, this is a good church. They'll be lined up to Pastor Lee Creek. And all the people that had interest all came and said, look, it's not the right time. Mm-hmm. I just led our church through a major change. I can't leave now. Or I just started a new church. I, I can't leave, you know. Um, and so of all the preachers I know, and I know a bunch of them, I host a conference for preachers every year. I ended up hiring a pastor I'd never met before. I, mm. I was on the search committee to find my replacement. You know, everybody in the church yeah. have heard all these preachers preach over the years in our meetings and things. And everybody had the guy they thought would be the guy. And it was none of those men. Mm-hmm. And we ended up with Joseph Allen out of Kentucky. And my pastor is a great pastor. I couldn't be more pleased, but I left there the first of September and he didn't get there until Easter. Mm. And this church didn't need to do a bunch of work to get right. This church was looking for a pastor the day I left. Sure. And it just takes a long time to find a guy that's biblically qualified and properly gifted for that specific ministry. Because just because you're qualified to be a pastor doesn't mean that you're gifted to pastor a certain church. Like Mm -hmm. I believe, Wade, I I firmly believe because I've seen your ministry. I know you, I know you meet all the qualifications of first Timothy chapter three. But that doesn't mean you're the guy to replace John MacArthur at Grace Community Church. Right. right. Nor are you the guy to go to some little, little small hillbilly church in the backwoods of Kentucky and pastor mm-hmm. there because your gifts and your skills are completely different. Right. Right. And that's the hard part. Finding a pastor that fits the church that is a, a biblical. Somebody put on Facebook this morning. They said, if you're on a pastor search committee, what are the top three things you would look for? And I said, number one, that he meets the qualifications of a pastor found in the New Testament. Number Mm -hmm. two, that he loves the people he pastors, loves the brethren. And number three, he's a gifted expositor. If a guy can preach and love his people and he's gifted of God to hold the office, everything else will work itself out. Sure, sure. Finding a guy like that who's not already pastoring somewhere or ready to leave where he's at, that's a tall order, Wade. Yes. Yes. And you know, to, to that church, you have to be patient and, and do not jump the gun and, and settle. I, I've known churches to go two years without a pastor. Mm-hmm. And, and so there is sometimes a very long period, uh, before the Lord leads you and in, to, to that man that the church needs to call. Uh, and so, yeah, but also think about this, uh, Qualified biblical men of God, yes, are hard to find. But wouldn't you agree that also biblical churches that have these pastors, biblical men of God, are also getting more and more rare today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I remember pastoring. Of course, I'd been there 10 plus years, and occasionally I would get a, a letter or an email. It would be from some church that had heard a sweet sermon I'd preached on the internet somewhere, you know, and they like, Hey, we want you to consider moving your family and relocating to Indiana. We have a great church up here. And I'm like, there ain't no way Mm. I'm not not leaving a biblically sound church that loves their pastor. The pastor loves them. There's a good relationship between the pastor and, and his congregation. They're not perfect, but they agree on doctrine. They they, they have the ministries working. Why would a pastor say, oh, I, I'm leaving this and going over here and yeah. starting all over again? I mean, God has to be in that to convince a pastor to do that. Yes, right. There's one pastor in every church. I mean, you may have an elder board. I get that, but there's usually right. out of the elders. There's usually one guy that does the bulk of the preaching. Yes, yes. But in a congregation, there's multitudes of people. Here's what I don't get. People in a good church that loves the Lord, everyone there is covenanted together, functioning as a New Testament church. We have a pastor that's preaching the word, and they're like, no, I'm leaving. I'm going to go look around. Mm. I'm going to go find another church and go there. 
I just don't get it. I, I see that as just an act of rebellion. I'm sorry, but right. If, if, unless you're being moved and or unless the pastor's gone off the rails or the, the whole church has gone off the rails. And, and really, if it has, are you sure you're the only one that has the spirit of the Lord in this? I mean, sure, why are sure. you leaving 99% right. of the time? It is not the church's fault. It's not the pastor's fault. It's that person's fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think the bulk of, of the reasons why church members leave, or at least in a lot of cases that I have come across in my ministry is, is due to change. Uh, maybe they, something traditionally has been taken away from them, but the irony is that, you know, these church members are leaving because the church is changing. <laughs> and so what do they do? They leave the church and make a major change. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but unfortunately in my ministry, I have probably lost more church members than, than gained. Uh, <laughs> but I think that is due to the fact of people say they like biblical preaching. People say they like expository preaching until they sit under it time and time again. And, uh, you know, this, this preacher, boy, he's all the time preaching on repentance and he's preaching on doctrine. And yeah. I had someone tell me uh, not long ago, uh, can't you just preach Jesus? <laughs> Why do we have to preach doctrine? Yeah. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You know, so you, you have this mindset. They can only take so much of the Bible. Just give me Jesus. I remember, they, I remember a couple that left Lee Creek and uh, this was years ago. And I tried to find out what, why they left. They would never tell me, you know, this God's leading us somewhere different, but some people in the church knew them. And they said, why are you guys leaving? I mean, the, the word of God's preached. This is a God honoring church. It's Christ centered. You know, why are you leaving? And they said, all he does every service is preach the gospel. We need something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. And, and when I was told that, I mean, I felt bad about them leaving, you know, I'd, I invested a lot of time in their, in their family and trying mm. to encourage them and help them grow in the Lord. And it, I was hurt that they left Right. But when they, when they finally came out and said, look, all he does is preach the gospel. He, he may be in this book and this verse, but he's somehow going to make it to where it's about Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins and believing on him. And that's all he does. And mm -hmm. I was like, guilty, you know, you got me, yeah. I, I give up, y you pegged me. Sure. But that's what I'm called to do. I'm a gospel preacher. Yes. And yes. I thought, well, where, where are they going to go? And, and when you look at where people that leave for biblical doctrinal preaching, they usually end up in some shallow superficial place where the Bible's seldom ever cracked open. The kids are kept entertained and occupied with tons of programs and meals. Mm -hmm. Everything is dumbed down so easy. A caveman can do it. Yeah. Right. Pastor, I want to encourage you. If you're losing people to those kind of churches, don't take it personally. Yes. What you're doing is what sheep want to be fed. Jesus Christ said, I know my sheep. My sheep know my voice. When you put out sheep food, the Lord's sheep show up. Mm -hmm. Sheep food is biblical preaching. Yes. If you have people that are leaving because you're not offering anything for the kids or you're striving to become more biblical, maybe you're making changes to get rid of some old traditional practices and someone gets upset about that and blows up. You can't please everybody. So set out every day to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and trust in him and never do anything intentionally to run people off. We don't, I weep every time someone leaves the church. Yeah. I do because I love them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I love the Lord more. Yes. And if something's wrong, and even if it hurts people's feelings, if you've got a biblical pastor, that's his job. He's going to do that. That's right. Uh, I've heard people say, well, pastors don't hurt people's feelings. I thought, have you read Paul's writings in the new Testament? 
Yeah. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Mm -hmm. I've never accused anybody in our congregation yeah. of being bewitched or right. called them fools. Sure, sure. But if that's what's needed and a pastor loves you, that's what you're going to hear. That's right. Yeah, we have a church nearby here that is just so pragmatic. It is. It makes me sick. And, uh, I mean, they literally use gimmicks the preacher will bring uh i guess you could say stage props, props. Ah, yeah. that's what i would call it so if he's preaching uh on stepping out of the boat they they bring a flat bottom boat on stage and he gets in it grabs a fishing rod and the church is just booming you know growing out just busting sure. out the seams and 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 that's difficult, you know, to see where, you know, maybe your church is losing people. This church is preaching an easy believism. Uh, pragma pragmatism is, is the name of the game there. Uh, it, it's difficult to see for sure. And there's this pressure to conform just a little bit because that other church there just seems so successful. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's, it's hard sometimes to see that, it, but like you said, you have to be faithful to the scripture. And, and I also want to talk to the church members. If you're a church member and you're listening to the podcast and you've, you, you've suffered through us talking about how to find a pastor. Now we're talking about church members having a hard time finding biblical churches. If you're in a biblical church, park it, mm -hmm. sit down, just say, yeah. no, we're not leaving. You know, my wife and I are going to celebrate 27 years of marriage this coming Friday. If one of us would have divorced the other, anytime we didn't get our way, anytime we had a, a rough stretch of six months, anytime we had some disagreement that we couldn't settle, if, if there was just a time like, we're just going to leave, mm -hmm. I'll just leave. We wouldn't be celebrating 27 years of marriage. Right. And you say, well, brother Harold, are you saying that being in a church is like being in a marriage? I'm not saying it's like that, but I'm saying you ought to take it that way mm -hmm. because I would have a hard time finding another wife as good as the one I've been married to that has put up with me like she has. And I know that, and I'm not yeah, ready to I go can say amen to that. Yeah, she could say amen to that <laughs> if she were on. I wouldn't talk like this if she were around though. I would, she might hear this. <laughs> She might hear this in her, in her drive to work, maybe in a right. week or so, but what I'm getting at is it's hard to find a good wife. The Bible says sure. so. If man finds a good wife, finds a good thing. If a man finds a good church, he finds a really good thing. And mm -hmm. if you've got a good church, for crying out loud, stay with it. Yeah. Right. Quit hopping churches. I mean. I just, yeah. I've read seeing them. I, I, I've pastoring in the same town for so long. I've seen those people on their second trip around, you know, they left mm -hmm. here, they went to this church, they went to that church, they joined this Baptist church, you know, and I remember coming to Lee Creek and looking at the church rolls and seeing a family that was there like three different times over the 13 years prior to yeah. me. And then during my tenure, they came a couple of times. And then as soon as I left, man, they've got a new preacher at Lee Creek. They came back. Yeah. They're always looking because it's not them. That's the problem. It's everybody else. Yes. If you're yes. hopping churches, I'm just going to just, just tone it down. You're the problem. Mm. Find a good one. Even if you got to drive a little while to get to it and stay there. Yes. That reminds me of an old country song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Instead of looking for love, looking for a good church in all the wrong places, right? right? The, so yeah, that, that's the way my mind church, thinks. Yeah. When you leave a church, don't look over in the back seat and say, well, what did you kids think? It oh, don't yeah. matter. Your mom and dad, you decide. Right. Yes. They're, they're not old enough to vote yet. They can't buy cigarettes. This is yeah. for a reason. Yes. Mom and dad, you're the spiritual leader of the home you guys get together is the word of God preached here. Does that man love his congregation? Does that congregation love their pastor? Are they seeking to honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by preaching and living out the gospel in their community? The answers are yes, yes. And yes, mm -hmm. join yourself to that group and stay put. 
Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that that is so needed today. And and just because you don't agree with everything the pastor has done, uh, just like you say, it doesn't mean that you can just walk out. Yeah. If we treated our marriages like this, wow, it would it would be awful. And so, yes, stick it out and, uh, you know, ask the Lord to give you the grace to get through it. Uh, change is difficult. I understand that. But, you know, line it up with Scripture and follow the man, follow the man of God, and uh, you will be better off because of it. Yes. Uh, all churches need change. All homes need change. You know, my wife and I do things differently today than we did in 1995 when we got married. Some of those changes didn't work out. Some of those changes were for the better. Mm -hmm. But change was not made just because, hey, let's do something different. It was yeah. because we saw a need. We said, we can't keep doing it this way. We, we have to change. You need to focus more on this. I'll focus more on this over here. Those kind of changes over time, some of them made me mad. Some of them made her mad. But over time, I saw they were for the betterment of our entire family and marriage. Right. I just, right. I, pastor, if you're in a good church, unless the Lord is just impressing it upon you to leave, stay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only way I would have ever left Lee Creek and entered this ministry is if God just pressed it on me so hard, I couldn't get away from it. Yeah. Because I, I intended to live the rest of my life as the pastor of Lee Creek Baptist Church. And they just find me in my office one day dead. They bury me and find the next guy. Mm -hmm. The Lord had a different plan for me. So God can move a pastor and God can move people. But if he's moving you, it needs to be for his glory. And because he has a different place of service for you, yes. not just because you don't like something that happened in the congregation. That's right. That's right. Well, man, listen, I, I've enjoyed doing this again. Like I say, this has been I think we, since the last time we have done a Zoom podcast meeting together, it's been since early June. You're right. It's been a while. So it's always good to see you and to do a podcast with you. We'll probably have to do one soon on uh, the elections coming up November. It's a very, very big and key uh, issue uh, as are we going to be able to, the conservatives take over the House and Senate uh, certainly there's a lot to, for us to pray about between now and, and then, but, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for listening to the Patriot Pastors podcast, and we pray God's richest blessings upon you. God bless.